Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams from Optimal Health Associates in Oklahoma City. It's March 8th, Sunday evening, and it's my weekly update on COVID-19 and all things related to it. Uh, it's also National Women's Day. Hey, go women as a gynecologist. Uh, big women supporter, obviously, so uh, we couldn't do it without all of you, so thank you. And I want to point out a woman who's done something amazing, uh, Dr. Um, Sprite out of uh, the Good Food Institute in San Francisco, I believe it's Ann. Uh, she put out a, a Twitter post um, that went through some very important facts on Corona or COVID-19. Based on her data, I'm just going to report what she does. She's a, a PhD and a science technologist and engineer who looked at what is most likely going to happen. And so she took the total number of cases in the U.S. now at about, and marked it about 2,000 because if there's 400, there's prob documented there's probably at least six, five to six times that amount. And she did the standard projections now on doubling. And based on her data, um, with the doubling of the coronavirus ad that's expected, we should be, by her projection, at about a million cases by the end of April, uh, two million cases by the first week of May, and four million cases by the second week of May, which is a pretty astounding number, but it's all based on um, pretty straightforward modeling that she's done. She also points out that there's about a million hospital beds in the United States. About two thirds of them are full at any given moment or about 650 to 660,000. So that leaves about 330,000 hospital beds available on any given day for things. Uh, with the COVID infection at about a 10% hospitalization rate, um, she predicts that our hospitals will be saturated somewhere around the first week of May. Now she also points out that there may be a week or so leeway on any of her projections, which isn't very much in my mind, but we're looking for things to start getting pretty tough here in the United States by the second week of May, if not sooner, which is why it's so essential right now we really focus on containment. I was happy to see today that the federal government actually has changed its tune and had several uh, people, uh, the head of the infectious disease and immunology section at the NIH, Dr. Anthony, I think it's Fauci, finally has said that there's a pandemic and we need to do something. He spent the last month not doing that uh, and really being counterproductive for some reason. But he stated today that people should not really be traveling if they're high risk. Uh, we really do need to focus on containment strategies. We need to stop shaking hands. We need to start thinking about limiting some public activities. And if we do this, and if we go full into this in the next two weeks, we can slow down the um, onset of massive illness and delay it several more weeks. And every week we delay it gives us more opportunity to have supplies and to ready countermeasures. So that would be really important. But I think the take home message now is that we are going to have a massive explosion of cases in the next four to eight weeks. It's gonna drastically affect all of our lives. I would encourage everyone to prepare a little bit for this. Um, we all know toilet paper is being scooped up as fast as possible, but I think it would be a good idea to make sure if you have any essential medicines you need, you get an extra um, prescription of it, you get a little bit extra food, um, just your basic things that you would want to have around if it's a little harder to get your normal everyday goods because that could be a problem. Keep in mind too that healthcare clinics are going to be affected. Uh, pretty dramatically. I mean, we're a gynecological clinic and wellness clinic. Um, we see about 200 patients a day right now. Um, it would not be inconceivable that we could even have to close um, if we have a lot of infections hitting our staff. And so people just have to get prepared for a lot of these things. I would finish with the idea that we'll get through this. Uh, it's definitely 
something that we can overcome. There's some interesting things about some stem cell therapies coming out of China that have been potentially helpful for acutely ill people, um, people who may have done some types of those therapies already in some practices across the United States um, with exosomes uh, probably have a little bit of protection we're thinking right now. Uh, we want everyone on zinc. Zinc is really important. It is 50 milligrams a day for maintenance. It's not going to deplete your copper at that level. Just make sure you take it with food or it's going to upset your stomach. If you think you're getting a viral infection or any infection, you need to take the zinc immediately. You need to take four doses over uh, 50 milligrams over four to six hours, and that's going to knock down your risk of uh, significant viral events. We don't know how much, but we're thinking 90 to 95 percent plus. If you do that, though, you don't need to then take zinc for two days. You can skip it because you're going to have a pretty high serum level for 24 hours, which is what you need. Um, and then a strong multivitamin. I would strongly, strongly encourage everyone to be on a multivitamin. There's been a one little change in the data that could be important and is concerning. There is finally some data coming out about children um, and younger people, and they there is a clinically significant infection rate. It's still very low. It looks like it's probably only about 1% or so of children um, or infants are actually getting more significant disease, unlike what looks like 20% of adults and especially older adults. But there is gonna be a little more concern with children because again, the information out of China has been so limited and reasonably inaccurate that we don't know for sure. We at first thought there would be almost no disease events in little people and it still look, looks like it's gonna be a tiny amount, but it's gonna be a little more significant than I was hoping for. But. Uh, I think again, children are still in good shape and it looks like pregnant women are in good shape. So not huge worries there. Uh, final thoughts, uh, if you're an older person, you have any kind of significant medical illness, you need to not travel. You need to be very careful about going into public places over the next several months. Um, it will become very obvious, uh, I believe in the next week or so, once we actually have testing in the United States, which we have not had really any of. Uh, we only had tested almost a total of 2,000 people come Friday this week. Uh, hopefully by the end of next week we'll be at 10 to 20 or maybe even 30,000 people we've tested, which would be really helpful. Uh, that's all I have tonight. Have a wonderful week and happy Women's Day. Thanks.